Jean Grey back again. Back again. Because she's the that... younger Jean Grey this time. Right, OK. Um, yeah, she's very different to the one that we saw in the first three movies, though. Um, she's very insecure and, and, and she doesn't quite have control of her powers yet. So it's an interesting... So that was Farmka Jansen that played it originally, wasn't it? It was. So did that you... was a good pronunciation. Did I get it right? Yeah, I've been trying for years, but it's just, <laughs> it hasn't worked out. <laughs> did you contact her and say, OK, you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing this? Yeah, I, I emailed her um, to just kind of check if everything was OK with me playing the younger version of her. And, and she was she seemed very happy and she kind of passed the baton over to me. And I asked her for advice and if there were, you know, any movies that she would watch to get into the role. Yeah. Um, she didn't, <laughs> but she just kind of said, like, the role is yours, go with it. And what's it like going into such an established brand like that? It's so daunting. Is it? It's really daunting, but, um, like, as soon as we got there, everyone made us feel so welcome, because it's such an established cast, and they've already... They're all so tight, um, such a tight-knit group. But as soon as we got there, we had this cast coordinator that would, like, take us all out to concerts and we go go-karting and stuff so we all bonded and also how what do you to sort of get into the role for it did you have to have lessons with accent and the american accent and doing all that side of things yeah yeah i did i i uh, i mean i'm around americans a lot so i i kind of can kind of slip into it but then sometimes you know people will be like oh you sound like you're a bit from milwaukee and i'm like how <laughs> How do I go from standard America anyway? But um, yeah, I, ha I had to have a dialect coach on set because sometimes my accent would go like all over America. Oh, well, yeah, maybe you just say, <laughs> yes, Milwaukee is exactly what I was going That's for. Where That's where, where she's from. Where she's from. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the, the character, Apocalypse, um, it was the first mutant. Yes. So it's back thousands of years old. Brought yes. Brought back to life. Brought back to life. He was the first mutant and the most powerful because he can basically take any mutant's powers. He can dissolve matter. Um, I mean, he can pretty much do it all, and he can transfer his consciousness into, like, a younger body so that he can live mm. on and on and on. And he also kidnaps Professor X as well. He does. He does indeed, which uh, causes chaos, mayhem. So you, you've got the powers of telekinesis. I do. Yeah, so uh, how, how, will you, how will you, uh, <laughs> put, put, like, you have yourself? Me, you, myself, You actually yes. have got them yourself. I do. Um, how, um, how will you use those against Apocalypse? Um, well, Jean, uh, without spoiling anything... No, please don't do that. She's, she really kind of can't control her powers and she, she's too powerful for her own good, so it's kind of about her letting go of them mm. and rather than, you know, trying to hone her craft. She's just kind of got to let go and release them and it's about her trying to build herself up to and that. And again, the effects are incredible. It's an amazing movie. It's I just, mean, it's yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. The CGI Great to be a part. in it is yeah, crazy. As big as that. And, I, and, I, and it has to be Game of Thrones that opened the doors to all of that. I suppose. Yeah, totally. I, like, I so wouldn't be... Like, like sitting on this couch today if it wasn't for Game of Thrones. Um, I think Brian is a big fan of the, the Thrones world right. because he cast Peter Dinklage in the last one and so I think there's like a theme running here. So how old were you? It was your drama teacher that put you up for that, wasn't it? Yes, it was my drama teacher at school. It was like ten, me and ten of my friends or something and we, we all just kind of like auditioned for this, this show that we kind of had no idea what it was. We didn't know what HBO oh my was. Oh gosh, that's just, I mean, what an opportunity. And you yeah. just wouldn't have known the scope and the scale of what you were doing. No, I mean, we didn't, we didn't know if it was going to be a good show. We, like, when we did the pilot, I remember saying to the producers, David and Dan, and being like, are we going to come back? And they were kind of like, we don't know. It's... You must say that pretty much at the end of every series anyway. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, yeah. am I alive? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, no. used to have drinks with... Um, the, when, when someone, character, main character, died, yeah. there were drinks organised, weren't So they? there's literally drinks every night on the drinks. <laughs> <laughs> we would just get plastered. <laughs> because there's no way of knowing who's going to go, whether you're going to get... Because it's a phone call, isn't it? Do you get the phone call if you you're a principal character? I'm afraid it's you. Yeah, you do. You get a phone call. Um, but most of the time, people can people kind of keep it a secret. Yeah. Um, so that must be hard. It's very. There's a lot of secrets to keep. There's a lot of secrets to keep, but luckily, like the Jon Snow secrets out now, so we're good. I mean, that was a secret that was even kept from you. It was kept from me. A kid told me in the fifth season he was going. That was it. And so I wrote him like a really long, heartfelt letter about how much I was going to miss him and how much I loved working with him. 
And he like came back the next season. He was like, "Your letter's so funny. I've still got it." It's hilarious. Oh, that's and so it, mean. He does it to just take the Mickey out of me now. So and he shows we, it to people. Were you the only <laughs> cast member who didn't know that he was that what was about to happen was going to happen because they fed I was to just us big really time. Gullible. Yeah. Well, everyone dies, so I was just like, "Oh, just another one." Another one bites the dust. <laughs> <laughs> another dead one. Um, dead one. So you, oh, well, I'm, I'm not going to ask you, I was going to say you haven't had the phone call yet, but I'm not going to ask you because we're just, we're only... And she wouldn't answer we're anyway. Episode, I, I wouldn't want to. We're creepy. episode three into, into season six. So I, I was watching it last night, so I don't want to know anymore. Is it true when you got the part for X-Men, um, you'd, you'd flown in, you were quite jet-lagged, yeah. and then you got the part and you were, you were emotional and crying and had to go and do another audition? Yeah, I... I... Like, I was so jet-lagged, I pretty much went straight from the airport to this audition and I hadn't had any sleep and then, because I didn't have any internet, nothing was working, so then I got a phone call from my agent while I was in the waiting room going into this audition and she was like, you got the role. And I was like, oh my God. And then I go into the audition, I didn't even need to do the audition because it would have clashed with X-Men. So then I was just like crying in this audition and the-, the Did they know why? No, I didn't tell them. So they were just kind of like, she's a little strange. <laughs> She's really going for this. It wasn't even an emotional scene. I was just like, oh. <laughs> so, but you knew as soon as you were doing that audition, there's no point doing this because I'm going to do the X-Men instead. Yeah, but I was so delirious and like shaking and I was just like, okay, hi, nice to meet you. I love what you actually said. Uh, I don't know whether this is true, but you said, well, I had this audition, but I'd booked the Uber, so I may as well go. Yeah, pretty much. I was, <laughs> yeah, I'd booked the Uber, so I was like, I'm not wasting this money. <laughs>